everybody. I am beginning to recognize some regular names and regular faces, which is good. I'm uh, glad that you guys are continuing to tune in. Um, and thank you so much for, for joining our webinars here at Global TEFL. My name is Kara. For those of you who've uh, not joined us before, I will start off today's webinar. And then the same as uh, last time with the webinar, James will take over towards the end and just go through um, some more resources with you guys um, at the very end of the presentation then as well. So without any further ado, we might actually wait for another minute or two, just in case we have a couple of, of latecomers. Um, as you know, today we will talk about games and activities when teaching online. And we're going to talk about this in a couple of areas. And then, like I said, I know James has lots of some really great online resources for you guys um, to go through at the end. So that should be quite fun. So, like I said, today we are going to talk about uh, games when uh, teaching online and uh, why we use games in our classroom environment. Now, don't get too bogged down by the word games, okay? When I say games, I mean any fun kind of activity, any kind of enjoyment that we can add into our learning. So we don't mean, you know, the, the typical board game or don't get too wrapped up and, oh, I need to include a game into my lesson plan. We'll go into this a little bit more throughout the, the presentation today and, and you'll understand where I'm getting from but we just mean activities in general and we want to be careful with the use of the word games as well because if you have a younger student then of course we can say yeah let's play a game I think this is going to be good fun whereas if we have older students or maybe adults, they might not be too enthusiastic if you start saying, okay, guys, let's let's play a game, right? It's time to play a game now. So maybe the word activity here might be a bit better. Okay, guys, let's do a learning activity to consolidate what we have just done. So the idea of a games and activities, it's interchangeable and uh, we need to be aware of a who our students are, what age our students are, and what level our students are at as well. So let's uh, head on in to our presentation and get started. So like I said, when we're talking about games, we're talking about any kind of activity um, that will be fun to use in the classroom. Like I said, James is going to go through a lot of online resources with you guys. But remember, we can have offline resources as well when we're using games in our online classroom. So we can use things like a board games. Flashcards are a really great resource to have, even normal playing cards as well. Um, and remember, a lot of games that we use inside a classroom can be adjusted and adapted to use in our online classrooms as well. So we use games in our class for uh, a number of dis different reasons. Let's take a look at these. So the first one then, obviously, like I said before, is we want to create a fun and encouraging learning environment for our students. So a lot of the time our students are coming to us maybe after their regular school hours or after their normal working day, maybe on the weekend. I know all of you guys have given up your Saturday morning to join us here today, but to think your students are doing the same thing. They're giving up their, their Friday evening or their, their Sunday morning to join us for a lesson, to join us to learn. So we want to create a nice fun environment for them to be in. As well as this then, it helps us to sustain the student's interest and the student's concentration. So this can work in, in two ways. Little games can help us to bring the student's interest and concentration back to what we're doing. So if they're getting a little bit distracted, um, you can say, okay, guys, let's do a quick little game and get the students up and moving about, draw everybody back into what you're doing, and then concentrate and focus on the work. Or then, like we said, if you're having a lesson that is uh, quite heavy content or quite difficult, quite boring content, 
maybe your students are struggling with grammar. It's a not very normal for our students to get super excited when we have a difficult grammar class. But we can introduce this lesson saying, OK, guys, I know we have some difficult grammar points to cover now, but let's get through this and we'll practice them in a game afterwards. And this will help to keep our students interested in concentration throughout the lesson. As well as this, then, when we play games in the classroom, we're actually using a combined practice of all of our language skills. So kind of similar to what we were saying last week in terms of TPR, but we want to give them a wholesome learning experience. So when we're playing games, the students are listening to the instructions. Maybe they have to read some questions. They have to work in a team with the other students. Maybe they have to speak in turns. So we're practicing all of these different skills whilst playing a game. As well as this, then, we're giving the students a practical use of the language and a meaningful use of the language. We're showing the students how we use this language and we're giving them a great way and an easy way to remember the meaning of this and the uses of these languages as well, or of the vocabulary as well. And then on top of this, when we play games, it's amazing the number of additional phrases that students pick up and learn. So, hey, you're cheating, or it's your turn, pay attention, it's my turn, hurry up, you're so slow, mm -mm, you're wrong. It's amazing how quickly all of these students pick up the words. And that's what we want to do. We want to encourage our students to use English naturally and with a lovely fluency. And so having these little phrases while you're playing games is a really nice boost um, to the children's or to your students' vocabulary, no matter what their, their ages are. So like I said, when we are using our games, it consolidates all of our, our learning into a one area, into one activity and we can uh, test then all of the different things and just have a look at all of the different uh, vocabulary or question areas or pronunciation issues that our students are having while we're playing this, this game. So let's take a look then at some of the different games or different types of games that we can use in a classroom environment when we are teaching. So there are loads of different types of games. We're not going to go through them all today. There's just no way it's possible. Um, but the reason why we're using different types of games as well, because we have different types of learners in our classroom. This is something that we've spoken about before, right? Where we have different types of learners, just like we have different types of teachers. And so we're using games to make sure that we are uh, reaching all of our different types of learners. And then we're using different types of games for different areas of learning, as well as for our different learners. So to start off with then are probably the two uh, most basic. So we have our, our warm up or our welcome and our cool down or our wrap up or our closing activity or games. And again, we wanna have a fun warm up welcoming activity, just like what I mentioned in the last slide, so that we have a fun and engaging and a welcoming um, environment for our student to join into the class. Sometimes the students maybe might be a bit tired. Like I said, you don't know when the student is giving up the time for their lesson. So maybe it's a Friday night, maybe they've had a really busy day at work. We want to create a nice welcoming environment where the student feels relaxed and they're excited to learn. They're excited to join in with what we're going to do in class. When we're talking about warm up activities as well, they don't necessarily have to be based on speaking English. They don't necessarily have to be based on the topic that you're about to do. It can simply just be movements for younger kids. For example, one of my favorite things to do is a stand up, sit down, touch your nose, or pull your ear, make a funny sounds, a funny noises, or one, two, three, four, five. So for example, just like what I said, a number one would be a stand up, number two, sit down, 
Number three, spin around. Number four, touch your nose. Number five, a clap. And uh, I will say the different numbers and the students will have to do the action with the, each number. And it's just to get us energized, getting us excited for the lesson. Same thing then with the cool down. We just wanna wrap up, we just wanna consolidate. We just wanna make sure that we're checking the student had uh, a good time in class. We're checking that they understood what we covered, if they have any questions, and we're preparing them to go home feeling positive about the learning environment that they've just been in. So, like I said, these can be anything. And usually with your warm up and your cool down games, depending on your timing of your lesson. So maybe if you have an hour lesson, you can leave your warm up a little bit longer, maybe with your introduction and everything up to about five minutes. If you have a shorter lesson, 20, 30 minutes, then I would keep your warm up again very short between two to three minutes. Next then, Besides our, our warm up and our, our cool down games, we have the targeted games for your skills and for language. So targeted games for your language, if you're doing vocabulary specific with the solar system, for younger students, the alphabet, fruit, vegetables, or targeted skills, grammar, listening, reading. And you will have different games and different targeted activities in each area of uh, these um, skills as well. So within grammar, you can find games for sentence structure, for nouns, for tenses. You can, uh, same with the phonics, you can find games for single phonics, for three letter blends, for reading for um, all of your diphones and morphemes, all of these kind of things. Same with the listening, same with the reading. And like I mentioned before, when we say games, don't get too wrapped up, wrapped up in the word game. We also just mean a fun activity. So for example, we're looking here, a targeted game for vocabulary, something like a repetition. Well, I have a young student. For example, we're, we're learning colors today. I've made some basic small flashcards for my students. And today we will do a red, yellow, green, and blue. Okay. Now I have practiced these with my students. If you have a older students, maybe you can use words or phrases. And okay, we've practiced it. We've repeated the vocabulary a couple of times. How do I do a, a fun game, a fun activity with younger students with just vocabulary? This is what I do. Oh, what color is this? Great. Shh, be quiet. Shh, green. Oh, good job. Oh, wow, you hurt my ear, that was so loud. So we can get the students to be really, really quiet and then really, really loud. You can do this by demonstrating yourself. You can do this by putting different sized fonts on the screen in front of you, point to each one. The bigger the font, the bigger voice they should use. So this is a couple of uh, examples. Same with the, you can speed the vocabulary up, get them to say green three times, super fast. Green, green, green. Get them to say green slowly. Green. Use high pitch voices, use uh, funny voices. So we might necessarily, or we might not necessarily put these under the category of games, but it's a fun activity that gets the students practicing the language without realizing they've just said the same word 14 times. When you consolidate all of your games, when you have a look and you find the games that you like or the games that you use often for vocabulary, for phonics, for grammar, whatever it is, that's when you end up with your, your go-to games. So in our little love heart here, I have some regular phrases that you might come across when it comes to games. 
go-to games will vary depending on teacher to teacher. So these are the games that are generally the ones that you go to first. Your students quite like them. You can integrate them into your classes quite well. You find that you think they're quite good as a learning tool and your students respond well to them. Filler games then are games similar to your go-to. These are, and also these games are similar to like your warm up. So sometimes filler games are just a, a game that we want to fill time with. Like we said before, with time management, we always want to plan a little extra couple of activities in case something takes us a little bit uh, shorter than expected. And so we want to have these games that we can just pop in here or there to change the pace of the class, to draw the students' attention back in, to uh, fill in some time. And again, these can be related back to our targeted skills and language game, or we can throw in a quick warmer, stuff like James has mentioned before with the I Spy, Simon Says, uh, things just to break up our class and to bring the attention and the focus back into what, what we're doing. As well as that, then you'll have students requests. So the regu more regular students that you have, they'll begin to get to know your games as well, and they'll have their favorites. And sometimes you will have students say, oh, can we play this game? Maybe I don't want to play this game. Sometimes it's really nice to give your students a choice. Sometimes I'll have two activities planned and I'll ask the students, which one would you prefer to practice today? Give them a little bit of control. I think that's a really nice thing to do. And then also maybe sometimes you'll go to play a game. Your students might not be so happy about it, might not be so impressed. They might want to play something else. And so when this happens, I usually say, okay, no problem. How about we'll play this game next week, but for today, I have this activity planned. So let's do this today, but next week I will try play the game that you guys want to play. So um, these are all of our different types of, of games. And like I said, anything really can be turned into a game, right? Anything can be turned into an activity. Look back there when I was saying about, you know, the simple colors. All I did was change the tone of my voice, the speed of my voice. But to young children, this can be a really big deal and really fun. So just get creative. Think about things that you enjoyed when you were younger. What childhood games did you play? These can all be adapted for us in the classroom. So we've looked at why we're using games in the classroom. We've looked at the different kind of, of games um, that we have. So what are the benefits of, of using these games? I and mean, we mentioned this briefly when we talked about why we use games. There's a lot of crossover here, but let's just focus on these main three. Like I said before, it gives students a break. So if your lessons are quite long, you can have quite a lot in them. It can be quite draining for students. So it's nice to have a couple of games, a couple of activities in there to help break up your lesson plan into more easy, manageable sections for yourself and for your students. In some classes, then you will, uh, might also want to have a change of pace. So maybe you are moving from one skill to another and you want to have a change of pace, a change of attitude. Or maybe you have students who are a little bit unmotivated, lacking in energy. We want to change up the pace and bring some energy back into the classroom or vice versa. Maybe you have students who are a little bit crazy in class. We want to change up the pace and do an activity or an exercise that will bring everybody back in and calm us down. So this is a really good use of um, games inside the ESL classroom memory. So this ties into so many of the webinars that we've done before, especially the last one on TPR, when we're talking about learning a language, learning our, our mother tongue, our native language. How did we learn this? We learned this not through textbooks. We learned this through 
activities, through wholesome learning, through making all of these connections, connecting sounds and words and images and noises and feelings, all of our senses together. And so that's what we're doing when we're playing games. We're creating a more vivid, a more memorable experience memorable experience for our students in class and for you as a teacher. It makes it more fun to be in the classroom as well if you're all making nice and good memories together while you're learning. And then having some useful games that you can use in the classroom that your students can then take home to use as practice i find this is a really really big positive i don't know how many of you um speak another language a second or third language um, but they always say, you know, when you're learning a language, um, especially as an adult, to immerse yourself in it, watch TV, listen to music, things like this. And it's the same with our students. We want to encourage our students to use English outside of the classroom as much as possible, whether that's, like I said, watching TV or listening to music or playing games. So if we have games that we can play with our students in class that the student can play outside of class that will get them to practice, I think this is a really, really big plus. And actually what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you some of the resources and the go-to games that I use um, in my classes. So, a quick one on vocabulary. I showed you um, my little flashcards that I used. Here you can see also I printed out a picture of a small bomb. Um, and this I print out and, and cut to match the size of my flashcards. And I'll show my students that I have a bomb in here. And the idea is when they see the bomb, they have to hide either out of, of the screen or they have to get on the floor. You know, a bomb is going to come. If you're inside the classroom, uh, sometimes I take advantage and throw things at my students, but I'm not going to recommend that you do that to yours. And this can be like interchanged. You can put a bomb in there. You can put a spider, a monster. You could even change up the vocabulary. So this is colors. I could put an animal in there. And whenever they come across the animal, they would have to make the sound instead of say the color. So we can get super creative with our offline props and we can use a lot of variations of the same activity just to spice things up a little bit. Another one then for vocabulary, and I am aware that uh, most of my activities are, are better suited to younger students. So this is something that you can use for all levels. Here you see I've printed off um, a couple of different mazes. And what I would do here is I'm just going to go to insert and I would use um, different vocabulary. So, for example, we've done colors today. And I'm going to insert this text box and I'm going to put black here. And I will put another one, so on and so forth. We will go red down here. Uh, I can uh, put to green and blue. And the idea is that I would give a one student the pencil and the other student has to direct the student around the maze just by using the vocabulary. So as the student goes up through the maze, another student will say black. If the student goes a left, they have to say red, 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 red. If they're going this way, green, 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 or whatever the vocabulary word is. This is another way that the student can practice the vocabulary. You could put questions here. You can put phrases here. You could put phonics letters here and get them to give you words as they traveled along this maze. These are all different variations of the, of the same game. And then uh, one another resource that I want to share with you guys, um, and this is something that I use in all levels of my teaching with younger students and for me this falls into all areas of games and activities too sometimes i'll use starfall as my warmer or my closing and then i'll go into it now and i'll show you the different activities that we can use in the classroom as well 
So Starfall is the name of, of this site. We have grades one, two, and three, and kindergarten, which is where I'm going to head into at the moment. And this is a really, really good website for ABCs, vowels, learning to read. Um, and this is what I mostly use it for. So we're just going to click into ABC here. And we'll see we have the entire alphabet here. So I use this uh, when teaching my kids the alphabet. But I also use this in terms of fillers or closes because I think phonics is a really important part of learning English and especially depending on what region you teach in, some students will struggle more with phonics. And so I think as a whole, practicing phonics exercises, you can do this with all age groups and all levels. Um, but this is really great. You can click in, we'll pick a letter, for example, we'll do letter F. And it, these will show you little videos. When we press over here, it will give us the sound we're supposed to make. So I will get my students to pronounce. And as we go through, the students will pronounce the letter, the sounds that they make, as well as some words associated with this sound. So, uh, oh, there is a no sound, <laughs> right? You guys aren't having any sound. So the idea is that um, we will go through these videos. At the end of the videos, then there will be a little activity, a little game, something like this that the student can also be interactive in. This will be for alphabet. Down here, you can see A, E, I, O, U. Um, and we have the alphabet songs and also then three letter blends for reading. Again, these will go through, we can see the games down here for the side where the students have to connect the uh, three letter blends and all of the different sounds. We practice the A, E, I, O, A, E, I, O, U, all of these sounds together. And again, like I was saying about resources that students can practice at home, this is a really great resource that you can practice with in class. And also you could, the students can download the app um, on their tablet or mobile phone or PC or something like this and can practice with their parents outside of the classroom as well. So um, these kind of resources definitely are a big plus, something that you can use inside and outside of the classroom at the same time. So collecting our resources then. When we're thinking about our resources, we can collect them from loads of different types of places. So like I said before, there are tons of online resources. I'm about to hand over to James and James is gonna go through so many with you. I've gone through the Starfall one, although it did make typical James mistake and didn't share the sound with you guys. But when we're collecting all of these resources, save them all in one area in your PC or save them across the top of your book bar. I would also sometimes have lists of games. So those of you who joined me for a webinar before have seen this photograph. This is my classroom when I was in China teaching and I had my games list on the board so that when I was teaching, if there were a couple of gaps in my lesson plan or if there wasn't something that was quite working, no matter how prepared you are, there are always gonna be those days where you just have a blank. And so it is really handy just to have visuals up to give you, a, oh yeah, I can do that in that class. That will work really well for this. So I would definitely make sure that when you collect your resources that you have them um, in a folder or visible in your classroom. Don't just scribble them down on a sheet of paper and then they disappear into the ether somewhere. And like I said then, there are resources online James is going to go through loads of them. You can search them yourself, of course. Google is great. Facebook is another one. I also quite often use Pinterest. I'm quite creative, so I like to do a lot of offline stuff as well. 
And I think uh, this is something that you guys also should be aware of. Like I said today, there are qu quite a lot of activities that we can do offline um, that add a little bit of fun into our classes as well. So I think that's pretty much it for me now. I am going to stop screen sharing with you guys. I'm going to hand over to James and then James is going to go through some resources, online resources with you guys, play some games so that we can all get a feel. And like I said, he also will show some resources that will be much more appealing to those uh, troublesome teenager years and then older students as well. So let me just stop sharing and let me swap hosts. Okay, James, you have the floor. Okie dokie. Hello, everybody. Uh, for those of you that know me, welcome back. And for those of you that don't, my name is James Bonilla. I'm the Academic Director for Global Language Training. Welcome. That was great, Cara, as usual, flawless. Um, that's my son in the background saying hello. And <clears throat> let me get back to the presentation. And Remember to share the computer sounds. Sorry, this is one of my favorite ones. This one is like, I don't know if you ever played, um, what was the name of that game, Cara? Buggle? <clears throat> yeah, the one with the die and stuff like that. Basically, you go to the web page and you click over here. You have to enable your flash player. Right? You have some instructions here on how to play. It's very straightforward. So what we're gonna do right now before I start the game, is I want you to mute yourselves and help me find some words here. Help me find some words, right? I'm gonna start oh, with the first it. one. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. What was it? Music? Nice, three points. Tessel. Tessel, hey. Listen. Listen, hold, okay. Hold it. We didn't take Tesla, I guess, because it's an acronym. Listen, hold, okay. Dad, hold. What was that? Dad, hold it. Older? Golden. Sorry, I'm, not, I'm hearing like an echo. Why what? <laughs> oh, I can't repeat the, the D, I'm sorry. Send, S-E-N-D. S-E-N-D? Send. Send. Awesome. No. No? No as in N-O? No, no, no. Oh, no. Wait, wait. No, it is. You're really good at this, Kara, aren't you? Kara <laughs> was like wiping the floor with me yesterday. We were playing, and she kept Kinda. getting all the five pointers. Which one? Medium. Steps is medium. Medium. So, medium, you said? Yeah, medium, yeah. You can repeat again. So, Condo. So, Sold. Condo. Bullet. Where is your Bullet. No, because I can't repeat the L. Comet, C-O-M-E-T. Someone else said that. Okay, let's see. Commit, right? What about... Oh, commit, yeah, with comment. What about, what about uh, condom? Condom, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that works. Okay, you know, you know how they say, stay safe, right? Stride. Stride. Right? That's a Stride, okay, that's a good one. Right. Wow, four points. Rent. 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 Loser. 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 Ah, was yes, was yes, was yes. Slam. Sorry, I can't hear you. Slam. Slam. Ah. Slam. <laughs> it's okay, James. Slam. That's a good one. Yeah, but I just wanted to, I wanted to get a feeling for it. 
fun, you know. Uh, See, everybody gets into it. Um, it's a great, great warmer game. Okay. It's a great way to get things going, to get people, you know, uh, organized. And it, 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 it makes it a little chaotic because everybody's shouting out words at the same time. But that's okay. And that's what you want. You want everybody engaged, right? So well, that's okay. a good one that I really recommend. All right. Let's go to the next one. Can you mute the music? It's very loud. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. My bad. All right. <laughs> All right. This is another one that uh, actually Kara recommended this one, and I thought it was really cool. Because the, the previous one that I showed you is just like a boggle type of game, and, and this one has a whole bunch of resources for you. And as always, I rushed into it. One second here. And give you some time to copy the web, web address, okay? All right. So it's www.eslgamesplus.com slash word search. I mean, hyphen word search, hyphen possible, hyphen game. So, or you can simply go to www.eslgamesplus.com and then navigate the page until you find the games, right? Because this uh, web page has a lot of resources, not only games, it has quizzes, it has <clears throat> lessons, worksheets, and to print worksheets and... printables, exactly. So, and let's take a look at it, right? <clears throat> Sorry, short code. Let's go there now. Here we are. So as I was saying, you got, you know, quizzes, you got videos, you got worksheets, all kinds of worksheets like crosswords, word search, puzzles, board and card games, et cetera, et cetera. And then for those of you who are working with CLIL, <clears throat> which is content um, language integrated learning, it means uh, that you have to include, you know, other subjects into your class or you're teaching at some bilingual schools where you have to teach science in English or math in English, you also have science and math games, which I think is pretty cool. Even in a regular, you know, I mean, um, English class, when you're working with teenagers, for example, it's always cool to explore different topics, mathematics topics, or science topics, just to keep things a little bit, you know, more challenging and a little bit more interesting, all right? And then you have, in the games, you have classroom games, memory games, sentence monkey, pirate board games, crocodile board games, spelling games, and so on and so after. My recommendation is, um, instead of going right now into all these different games, is take some time, have some fun, explore the games, play the games. That's what I like to do. I like to play the games personally before I actually, um, you know, work with my students. So, so I know exactly what it is that I'm doing, all right? Uh, get back to the presentation now. The other page that it's pretty cool, this is another one of uh, Kara's recommendations, is www.eslgamesworld.com. Okay. It's another one of those uh, um, multi-resource pages. You can find a lot of cool stuff to do online. Okay. Let me see a thumbs up so I know I can move on to the page. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, John. Thank you, Patricia. And here we are. So again, this one you have games, you have printable games. Uh, if eventually, you know, we will get back to face-to-face -face classes, whatnot. You have different types of tools. And when you go to games, it's really cool because again, you have math, science, English as a second language. You got worksheets, uh, games for teaching English to kids grammar games and exercises, games for yourself, classroom teaching. I mean, the works. You have a whole plethora of games here. You have lower, higher, lower elementary, et cetera, et cetera. Again, another page, yes, that you can use for multiple purposes, another page that you want to go into and you want to explore and you want to have some fun, you know, playing with it. I mean, I'm a 52-year-old man and I still enjoy playing this game, you know, I'm the kid in me. Sometimes I'll, I'll even play with my son, which sadly to say he's three years old and, and, and he beats the crap out of me all the time, but you know, uh, he's matter. <laughs> Improved version of James, mini James. You can probably hear him running around. Um, he's probably gonna show up his little face anytime now. Okay, though. 
another one that I found uh, while uh, searching around, which I thought was really cool, was www.mes-games.com. All right. Thank you, Steffi. Then you have learn and review vocabulary, spelling questions, and grammar. Okay. And then, you know, yesterday, uh, Kara and I were playing this one, you know, I mean, preparing for the, for the presentation. And, and we, we kind of enjoyed this one. Um, this is like a little basketball game, and you choose if you're going to shoot for one point, two point, or a three point shot, right? Are you so showing the picture? Uh, I'm not sharing. I'm sorry. Are, yeah, I don't see what you're talking about. Am I still in the presentation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just have the website, though. There, there we go. go. OK, thank you for pointing that out. All right. Here we have, let me go back. We, we don't uh, get lost. Go back to the presentation here. Like I said, you need to have your flash player activated. Uh, is this little icon that, that always shows up here, right here. It might tell you, you know, I mean, um, allow, you know, flash to play and allow it. I was in the grammar games and I was in the basketball game, okay? And then you can choose one point, two points or three points. What kind of shot you gonna take, all right? So let's go for a three point shot. Then you have a little illustration here and the idea is to find the correct answer. I'm, I'm gonna click one at random to see what happens. First one is right. And then you shoot. Oops. Ah, bummer. What a bummer, right? Right. Let's choose the correct one. Yay! Nice shot. Three point shot, nice shot, and this and that. So it's actually, you know, it's a lot of fun. Okay. And then you have to, again, explore all the different interactive games that the page has to offer, right? Then we have another one that I found with a whole bunch of activities, www.funenglishgames.com. Okay, and then I particularly went into reading games and you know whatnot, but you can simply just go directly to funenglishgames.com and then navigate the page and find the activities that you need, okay? Let's go there now. Everybody seeing it? Just, just checking, checking. I mean, Zoom can play games with me sometimes. You know, it's not my fault. It's Zoom's fault. You know, Zoom hates me. You know, just so we're clear, you know, it's not me. What All is right. my excuse? Uh, Zoom. Zoom doesn't like you because, Okay. You know, uh, me too. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, we're colleagues and, you know, Zoom is trying to sabotage us. All right, again, you have reading games, you have grammar games, you have writing games, you have board games, you have spelling mm -hmm. games. And this one is the one we were doing yesterday. Uh, we were doing the, the map directions. Here, it's asking me to click to enable flash. So I'll click over here and I'll allow, you know, flash to run on my computer. And then choose a challenge, then follow the instructions to plot a route on the map that visits the right places in the right order. So let's say we're going to the cinema. So what I would like to do is one of you, yes, to help me out here. I'll need a volunteer. It says, starting at the scrapyard, let's find the scrapyard. I'm right here, yes? Go to the cinema, meeting friends at the skate park first. You can use only five sections of road. So I need you to tell me, go straight, turn right, turn left, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, I'll start here. Okay. Where should I go now? Go left. Go left. Yes. Okay. Now where should I go? Go straight up. Go. You mean I can't go straight? Right. I have to go take a right. left or a right. Uh, uh, right. Go right. Right. And now. And left. Turn left. left. And now. Straight. Straight ahead. And cinemas and on the right hand side. Awesome. 
That's it not says right. that's not right. He didn't go to ah, the state park. I didn't go to the park. That's correct. I didn't follow the instructions. Right? <laughs> there you go. So that's a good one. All right. So let's start again. Go straight. Go straight out, straight ahead. Okay. Take a left. I'll take a left. Go straight. Go straight ahead. Take a right. Take a right. Take a look. Excellent. Thank you. So it's yeah. a little bit tricky, right? But it's kind of fun. And yeah. this one is good for adults and teenagers as well. You know what I mean? So we've been looking at a lot of games for kids, but also, you know, a lot of us will, will be working with teenagers and adults. And, and of course, this is a great page, you know, for that purpose. But I do have another one, which is one of my classics. Family Feud. Have you ever played the Family Feud? Yes. All right, I'm gonna turn my computer volume down because the music is gonna get a little bit loud. The web address is uh, zone.msn, these are, you know, msngames.com slash en slash family feud slash defa ult dot htm okay let me know when you have it please come here big guy Sammy. Mm -hmm. as always let's have a thumbs up when you have to excuse me my allergies are running bad today here we go <clears throat> so, you have play free online, yes. And then you're gonna have two, uh, different choices. You're gonna have the classic, and you're gonna have the uh, the one, the modern, you know, version of Family Feud. I'm just gonna choose whichever. Now we're playing the modern version here, not the classic, right? <laughs> so, it's very simple, and I need you to help me. Stephanie is the computer, but you can choose two players and you can have, you know, different players and stuff like that. So let's go with round one. All right. Name a place a housekeeper usually forgets to clean. Behind the refrigerator. Refrigerator? Behind the refrigerator. Behind uh, well, the refrigerator. it's usually one word, one word. Oh! Sorry. Mm. Give me another one. Ceiling. The ceiling? You can also type. Uh -huh. It's a lot harder than you think. This is Under the couch. Advanced. Under the couch. Sorry. These people don't really clean. <laughs> Lights. 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 So those are the correct answers, right? <laughs> and we got beat. All right. There's also the um, the classic version, which is this one right here, which is my favorite. I wanted to show you both because they're, they're really cool. Again, click to enable flash. The other one doesn't need flash. This one does. And if you're from the States or, I mean, if you have- Time to play Family Feud! Let's play the Family Feud! <laughs> we surveyed 100 people. The top six answers are on the board. Here's the question. Okay, so tell me something you might wear while biking. Helmet. Helmet. Yeah, of course. Survey says... Biking short. Sorry, I need to put the volume back up so I can hear you guys. Again? Biking shorts. Short, okay. Survey says... All right, another one. Boots. 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 Like this, boots? Yeah. All right. Survey says. Uh, oh, I remember oh, oh. Not on a, on a motorcycle. Hi, Biz. Goggles. What? Hiking glasses. 
Glasses? Yeah. Survey says... <laughs> glasses? Somebody mentioned gloves, right? Gloves, yeah. yeah. Survey says... <laughs> All right, we still got two to go. Sneakers. Sneakers. Oh, thank you. Survey says. Oh. Oh. Car. Socks. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Now that's a good one. Survey says. Oh. There we go. Oh. Strike Socks. three. Too bad. Let's take Socks. a look at what you missed. Let's see number three. Okay. Let's see number six. Let's see how you did. All right, so it's a good idea, right? Good work. You're ahead. So it's actually a pretty cool game. Uh, pretty cool game to play with adults uh, and teenagers. And of course, my favorite one of all times. Um, and I've mentioned this one in, in previous webinars. www.englishclub.com. <laughs> now, normally I go to English Club for lessons for. Uh, grammar explanations for grammar exercises but it also has a whole bunch of really cool games let's take a look shall we but i'll give you um, a few so you can copy the web address okay got it yep okay awesome English club is not as visual, it's, it's not as engaging, but again, you, you have a lot of cool games. And what I like about it is that the games are focused towards whatever it is that you're teaching. So if you're teaching verb tenses, if you're teaching adjectives, for example, then you can go to adjectives uh, games, and then you have matching um, adjective noun collocation games, adjective order games. Let's go into matching adjective games. Okay? And then, you know, you have a sub menu with synonym adjectives, opposite adjectives, adjective nouns, game sets, and whatnot. And let's see, let's go with this one. So, what would go with delicious? Tasty. We'll go with quick. Fast. Very good. What about tired? Sleepy. 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 Yeah. What about big? Large. 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 What about little? I mean, small. happy. Small. happy. Small. Oh, happy is glad. Uh, and, okay, sorry. <laughs> and then you check the score, and it tells you up here that you got 100% correct. Okay. So again, not as visually, you know, engaging, but adults really enjoy this type of games because you can practice, you know, grammar structures. You can practice vocabulary. In this case, we're practicing, you know, synonyms with adjectives and, and whatnot. Okay. All right. And now, the moment has come. Play Kahoot. <laughs> you guys know I love Kahoot. I, I played Kahoot with you guys uh, several times. To play Kahoot, you simply go to kahoot.com. And for those of you that have not had this experience before, let me go over it rather quickly. It's pretty straightforward. You go to Kahoot, and then you have to create an account, right? I already have an account created, of course. You simply go to sign up and you create an account, like you create in, you know, a Google account and whatnot. And once you're in Kahoot, yes, then you can oh, Jesus. create yes. games. Yes. I'm going to log in here. Or you can basically, it logged me out for some reason. Just one second. You can create your own Kahoot. I created a Kahoot based on what we learned today. So now you're going to show us, yes, how much you actually learned. Okay. All right. I'll get in right now. Once you create your account on Kahoot, and I'm in, I'm, I'm in Kahoot right now, then you can go to Kahoot and you can search for a specific type of Kahoot, let's say simple past. Okay. Uh, let's just go with grammar then. What's the specific? Present perfect continuous. 
And then, you know, it'll, <laughs> right now we're on, on my cahoots. That's why it's only showing me, you know, some limited results. But if you go like to the general cahoots, then you'll find a whole bunch of, of different activities that you can use. And, and, and you, don't, you don't need to, um, you know, bother, you know, creating your own cahoots. But personally, I, I prefer to create them, right? How do you create a cahoot? Well, it's quite straightforward. Oh, sorry. Over here, when it says create new, sorry, I'm getting some, excuse me a second. I got to close my blinds. Got some construction work going on outside. And the sun is really glaring badly. Okay. You can create a new Kahoot. And it's very simple. It's like creating a quiz. Okay. You go here with this create. And then you type in your question here. And then you type in your choices. And then I would ask people enjoying this webinar. Yeah, I forgot to capitalize the A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Away. <No> Get <laughs> lost. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> of course. And I created my question. I'm going to click on the answer that, you know, comes to my head right now. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> right? And then I can preview my Kahoot, right? And I can continue, you know, adding questions. And as I add the questions, what I can do is I can, excuse me a second. I need to move you guys over here. Simply just put, you know, I mean, add another question, and then it'll give me a choice of true and false, type the answer, puzzle, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it's very user-friendly. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you did some sort of activity in class, it actually took me less than 10 minutes to prepare today's Kahoot. And it also shows you students, you know, that you're committed, that you have a very well-prepared class. And the fun thing about Kahoot is that it's for everybody, okay? I mean, Little ones as well. Anybody that can use a cell phone, and, and that includes, I, I, I suppose, even my son, you know, he's three years old and he already, you know, plays with my cell phone like nothing. All right, so we're going to go to the Kahoot that I prepared for you guys, which is Teaching Online, Tefl Teasel Games. And I'm going to go play, click on Teach. You can also assign the Kahoot for homework, all right? And then normally you can play in a team mode or you can play it as classic. We're going to play classic here because we're playing individually. Now, for those of you that have the application, I, I would like to take the cell phones right now. Oh, get rid of that music. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. There we go. All right. Now, for those of you that have the application, uh, just grab your smartphones and let's open the computer application so this will be the Oh, okay, let me see if I can take your phone over here. Copy the number into your phone. Yeah, hold on. That's an easier solution. There. Now we can hear you. All right, how about now? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, sorry. I was trying to lower down the music because it, it can get a little bit annoying. Just a little bit of it. There. And I like the, the classic one. All right. Again, um, go on your browser on your cell phones. Go to www.kahoot.it. And then it will ask you to, I mean, uh, type in a PIN number. <clears throat> and that PIN is going to be 326-8322. So I already got Fatima, Ethan, Natalie, Mary Alex, and Pepe in. Uh, I'm going to give you another minute to join in. Kara, hey. sorry, you can't play. Me? I'm sorry, please repeat that number. Uh, three, two, six, eight, eight, three, three two, three, two, two, two. It's right on, right, right over here, right on screen. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I'll see it. Not a problem. <clears throat> All right, nobody else is joining in. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, yeah, we'll wait for Johan. Very good. My 
Okay. It'll also ask you to create a name. So let's say, for example, somebody puts an, in an inappropriate name. You can always just click on that person and you can, you know, push them out of the game. Students sometimes will come up with <laughs> inappropriate synonyms. All right, Johan is in. All right, so we're good to go, right? Okay, we got Sen, Ellie. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go with the people that we have now, right? And more. Now, when you see the question, you're going to see four answer choices in four different colors. What's going to show up on your cell phone is just the colors. So you got to, you got to be very quick and you got to touch the color that corresponds to the correct answer, all right? And the cool thing about this game is that I can play it with people from around the world, like we're doing right now. It's super interactive and it's super fun. All right, let's start. <clears throat> Complete the following statement. Ain't our... Time's up. The correct answer, everybody got it, was a central part of ESL learning. Pepe takes the lead. Again, it's not only about getting the correct answer, it's how fast you answer will determine who wins and who loses, right? So you gotta be very quick. Question two. Which one of these is not a way to store games? <clears throat> Yeah. Sometimes you press the wrong one, you go. <laughs> okay, there's one player that's not answering. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we got seven people get the correct answer, which was scribbled on a loose sheet of paper. That's not a way to store a game because you'll lose it. And Pepe just lost the lead to Ethan. Ethan took the lead. Excellent, Pepe, you went into third place and Sen is moving up to second place. Which of the following, wait to, sorry, that was my typo. Which of the following reasons was not mentioned as a benefit of using games when teaching? All right, so we got six correct answers. The correct answer was teaching is hard. It's easier to play games in class. That's not a, I mean, a valid reason to play games, right? Ethan's still on the lead, but Natalie is creeping up right behind Ethan, uh, 12 points behind. Pepe is still in third place, Sen still in fourth place. There's still time to catch up though. Should you start your lessons off with a quick game to get the kids interested, excited, and active? True or false? Somebody has an answer yet. My internet's not good. Ah, okay, don't worry. All right, so we got seven correct oh. answers. Remember, it says you shouldn't. That was a, that was a tricky one that I, that, I, that I left for you. It was a trick question. It says you shouldn't, not you should. Very good. She was on the lead now. Ethan's on fire. Very good. Natalie's still in second place. Pepe, we still got the pack. Okay, let's go. Filling vocabulary can become very repetitive and dull. Having a range of games helps to keep things interesting. True or false? <laughs> Awesome. Mostly everybody got the correct answer. Good. All right, let's see. Ethan, you lost the lead, brother. 
Oh, man. Natalie just overtook you. But don't worry. You're still in the fight. Pepe, you're still there. I mean, the difference between the three first places is very minimal. So, I mean, it all comes down to the last three questions. <laughs> Many drilling games can also be used for funnies. Okay, now we're going. It was true. <clears throat> Patty just came into the pack. Natalie's still holding the lead. All right, two more questions. When teaching grammar, it is not important to include some gamers, some games, sorry, to keep the class interesting. I guess I didn't get you on this one. <laughs> Nice. Okay, you didn't fall for it this time. Cool. Ethan just overtook Natalie. Oh my God, it's going to be a photo finish. Pepe's still right behind. All right. One last question, and this one defines everything. All right. True and false question. Be very quick. Any drilling vocabulary game can also be used to teach numbers. Suspense, suspense. It's actually true. And let's look at the podium. Third place, Happy, Yay. And the second place was Natalie. I think Ethan got you. All right, Ethan. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. There we go. We have to run it off. You know? And like I said, you know, it's a, a super cool game, a lot of fun, and you can create your own Kahoots, or you can simply, you know, search in the Kahoot database, and you have Kahoots for just about everything. Uh, it's also, I mean, on a non-related note, it, it's a great game to play with family, or when you have, you know, gatherings, or to relax or unwind. I play it with a lot of fellow teachers, just just to relax. You know, we play online and we have a little fun and we learn. All right. What games do you play? Learning game when you're with your friends or family. Uh, when I'm playing with teachers, there are a lot of cahoots that are related to TEFL, and you can search for uh, TEFL cahoots actually. Okay. Oh. And uh, English teaching, you know, I mean, uh, pedagogy. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Or sometimes, you know, when I do training, I used to be the, the director of uh, this, um, you know, multinational institution called Alliance, and I used to train my teachers, you know, with Kahoots. I used to assess, you know, how much my teachers had learned by using Kahoots. Okay. So you can actually, you know, I mean, find a lot of cool stuff. Okay. You can go over here to favorites, for example, and you'll find a whole bunch of different Kahoots. Well, I don't have any favorites right now. This is like, it keeps track of your favorites or you can simply go to the search bar and search for whatever Kahoot you want to play. All right? Again, so you can some time. You, so yeah, you John. can, so they are Kahoots to play and you can create your own codes also. Exactly, my Kahoots are public. For example, you can access all my Kahoots and there are thousands of teachers that have created different Kahoots and thousands of people that have created different Kahoots and you can access them as long as they're public. I, again, again, you can choose to make your codes public okay. or you can make them private. So okay. you can only access them when you know with a passcode or with a password. Okay. I don't have a problem sharing. So, I mean, I, I, I just leave all my codes open. So all you need to do is go to Kahoot and you know, log in and then search and have fun. Do you have to open an account? Uh, in order to play? Yeah. No, no, not necessarily. No. No. Uh, to create Kahoot, yes. Okay. 
But for example, so, you, so to, you, to create know, a game, the, you have to. Yeah, you have to sign up to create the, the game and also to manage. But to play, the game. you don't have to. Your students no. don't have to download the app. Exactly. They can just go play with that number. Exactly. Like uh, if you notice right now, a lot of you did not have the application. You did not need the application, and you did not need to have an account to play. But the game manager or the game administrator has to be, have an account. Signing up is very easy and it's one hundred percent free. So if I want to use it for my students, I have to create an account for me. Yes, and it takes okay. about two minutes. Okay. And then right, you show. have your online profile where you can save other cahoots made by other people that you enjoy. You can save images that you like. You can save favorites. So you create an online profile that you, every time you click in or you create something, everything stays onto your um, online profile. And then you can start building up your own repertoire of, of resources and funds. Look, and here's a whole bunch I of I like examples. this. So <laughs> Halloween trivia, the United Nations Global Solidarity. Yeah, I like I mean, it too. Marvel Science. I like Merriam Webster. There's a whole collection of those. So it's a cornucopia of, of resources. How how did you get there? Where did you find that? Okay, you go to kahoot.com. Uh -huh, okay. We went, yeah, I got the website. And, and then, then you go to explore content. Uh, I'm trying okay. to find where you are. It, oh, over on the right. Okay. Over on the right. Explore content. Okay. Explore content. Right. Okay. And then you find all the different Kahoots. Okay. okay. To find content. Okay. To find exactly. You can also okay, you click where it can. says play. And it also takes you to here. You can uh, basically find them by subjects. You got business, marketing, college preparation, computer science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, that's great. Okay. You can also find Kahoot in different languages, Arabic, Chinese, Croatian, English, French, Hindi, Indonesian, Irish. Irish would be fun, Cara. Yeah. I think I'm going to play a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> Irish is more difficult than you think, you know. People of are course. shocked. People are so surprised. But Irish is English. Are, they, <laughs> are the games... Uh, uh, listed according to the CFR uh, levels? B1, yeah. B2, B C1, um, C2? No, not necessarily because, no. um, I mean, most of these games will be played with advanced students. Okay? Advanced students. Yeah, Kahoot games I would play with intermediate and advanced students because of the, the type of questions. Or you can create your Kahoots based on your student level. Okay. Like a, like a grammar game, like uh, fill in the blanks. You know, yeah. this... This is slash but it's, father. But it's not marked, uh, for example, say like B1 or B2 level. No, no, no. But you can you can basically personalize it, right? Okay. To the level that you want. Will I will I will I be able to reach a correct game if I search, uh, for example, say like the grammar for B1? Uh, say you for might. instance. You might, I've never tried it, uh, okay. but I mean, if you go in the search bar, again, you have to spend time with this thing, you know? Okay. And okay. as you spend time with it, I mean, the important thing is that to create the account, it's extremely uh, straightforward, all right? Okay. Let me see. go to the main page over here. It's like it keeps uh, giving me the option to log in because I already have an account. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? You can tell me back. You, will get, you will get the, uh, the option that says, you know, create account or sign up, yeah. it will say. And then you simply create your account. And okay. it's pretty straightforward, like I said. All right? Okay.